We live in a twilight world. Let's do another quick recording. Uh, I just came across this on Forces News. And, you know, they're basically now saying that esports are an acceptable sport to pursue as like a as like a hobby in the military and um yeah man they're really pushing um you know folks in the military to play games like call of duty and so on um it's all interlinked yeah because they want to blur the they want to blur the realities like are you playing a computer game is this real life is real life imitating a computer game? Is a computer game imitating real life? What's going on here? I've noticed that um, a lot of people in my generation probably grew up on an Xbox and they probably played either uh, Call of Duty or Halo and they're kind of used to that kind of online game style of red team versus blue team and so on, which is being reflected in many of the wars right now when... Clearly, like, the, the the supposed good guys are wearing blue and the bad guys are wearing red. You know, what I'm talking about with the gaffer tape around their, around their uniforms. But, yeah, man. You know, of course, the whole drone warfare thing of essentially people miles away from the battlefield putting on either a headset or sitting in some sort of um, simulator and flying a drone and, you know, essentially assuming that they're you know, flying a kamikaze drone into a tank. But how do they really know, you know? They don't. But this is going to be the future of warfare, right? And it reminds me very much of the film Ender's Game, which is obviously a adaptation of the book. I've never read the book. The book's probably a lot better. Probably a lot more in-depth. Well, I, you know, I remember the film. And the concept of the film was it was set in some kind of future and the human race had been at war with some kind of insect, uh, alien type being. And um, apparently it gotten so bad to a point they had to recruit young people, really young people, into the military to start training very early and take on the fight. And essentially this military academy, they work out, you know, through a series of games and challenges, which one is the smartest and which is the best kind of leader. And once they found out who that was, was when in this case it was the guy called Ender, there in the middle, then they would give him control of like a simulated battle taking place uh, with starships and stuff against these insect alien type creatures. And the twist is, on the final go, you know, he Ender, he he, you know, he learns how to beat these, uh, beat the game. He thinks he's playing a game. And he basically sacrifices all of his players to winning this victory. And then, yeah, man, the twist is that actually it was not a simulation. He was actually in command of real, real people and real ships. And um, it's kind of, it's kind, when you think about it, man, that's kind of like very heavy, isn't it? And yeah, it gets broken to him after, you know? Yeah, that wasn't a simulation. Every one of them... Dots on the screen was a real person. They were real ships. And uh, yeah, you you know, you won. You won the war, my friend. And he obviously has the... Um, <laughs> the devastation of realising that he thought he was playing a computer game. And he sent all of these people to their deaths. I think the... Pro you know... I can't remember the film. I haven't seen it in a long time. But I think the premise being that... Once he detached himself from life... And being in charge and just thought it was a game, he'd be more kind of ruthless and he'd do what he had to do to win. And it's kind of, yeah, man, it's very sick, really, making kids do this. But when I think of this and what's going on currently and how things have gone, it was going to be like an Ender's Game in reverse. Where the next generations, Generation Z and Alpha, are going to be playing computer games thinking it's real. Yeah, so it's going to be a reverse Ender's Game, and that sounds weird. That sounds sexual or something. Reverse Ender's Game. I don't know. Sounds weird. But yeah, man, it's going to be the opposite, right? They're going to be sitting way back from the front line, either flying drones, piloting drones, or piloting kind of, you know, remote controlled tanks, or remote controlled submarines, and thinking it's all real, and then they just, yeah, they're going to be miles from the front line and so on. 
um, yeah, reverse Ender's Game. So yeah, I, I think that's been part of the whole kind of manipulated evolution of the human existence is getting young people on to uh, computer games very early on, our generation and generations below us. You know, they kind of made these consoles affordable so even poor people, the poorest of the poor people in poor parts of the world can actually afford an Xbox or a PlayStation. And it kind of puts the idea of what war should be like into their minds already uh, in a fun um gamified version right so now when they present you a fake phony war on the tv it matches up with the computer game the call of duty computer game and to them that oh so it must be real this is what i was raised on you know and that's how you can get away with all this ridiculous shit because they were raised on this kind of ridiculous gamified uh cartoonish version of war so uh yeah man it's it's, it's all connected in my opinion I mean, look at looking at the you know the state of warfare at the moment. It's all revolving around drones, right? Uh, the U.S. military has recently opened up a drone academy, or I think they call it a drone. Sorry, a drone university, where they're teaching um, soldiers like how to basically deal with drones and how to shoot drones and stuff. Which sounds kind of weird to me because surely shooting something doesn't change, doesn't make any difference. But yeah, man, they're tying balloons onto drones and that's the drone university you've got to shoot the balloon off the drone and all this kind of shit and then obviously using um electronic weapons that are apparently you know um you know jam the signal up and all this kind of shit but this is the big debate they're saying like we don't want to this is how the war is going to go right they don't want to spend more on shooting down a cheap drone if the missile or kind of counter drone um, uh, tactic costs more than the drone that's coming at you, you've lost the war. So if they're sending a, if the enemy is sending a drone at you that only costs a hundred bucks, yet your missile or whatever weapon that takes to knock this down costs two hundred bucks, you've lost. Yeah, and then that goes on for ten years. You've technically lost. So the whole big kind of thing at the moment where. All the militaries that don't understand this is just all nonsense, a nonsense war. They're basically at work. To them, it's all real. And this is what makes it real. They're trying to work out, like, how do we win the drone war? We've got to make drones... You know, he who makes the drones the cheapest is going to win. Um, yeah, man, it's quite, it's quite interesting, really. But, yeah. So it's going to be a battle for who can make the the most amount of drones quickest and cheapest and um yeah then it'll be getting people very norm getting the militaries normalized to fighting wars with drones via a black mirror screen you're sat there with an xbox controller you put on the goggles you've you've sent something allegedly into a war but you know it's going to be it's going to make it a lot easier to hoax the soldier I think I still think they were all, you know, even if we were to go like 200 years into the future, they're still going to make weapons. So a, a certain section of a war zone will be men up to their knees in muds in a trench getting a uh, fully immersive experience, which then they're going to go run off and tell their family and friends was a real experience. I think that will always be there. I think artillery will always be there. Uh, tanks, you know, all these things that are very useless and hard work and cumbersome that are real and bring a war to real life for the soldiers who are getting duped i think this drone dynamic is just going to add an extra layer to it um especially with the generations coming up who are not very physically fit who don't really want to the last thing they'd ever want to do is sign up to a conventional uh, military of uniforms and boots and sitting in a trench but this will open up a gateway you know, if they start opening up drone regiments and drone pilot um, um, opportunities and job roles, I think that will be what gets Gen Z into World War 33. Uh, right now, as it stands, um, helicopter pilot, fighter jet pilot, these are very exclusive jobs that are held back for sons and daughters of plutocrats and Freemasons, yeah? Like if you if you rocked up off the street and said you wanted to be an Apache 
pilot, no chance. If you said you wanted to be a typhoon pilot, no chance. Um, they are held for, yeah, man, sons and daughters of, of Freemasons and stuff. Because that, that's the sort of job you can't just have any Tom, Dick or Harry going into. Because people then real, will start to work out what's going on um, regarding air power and stuff like that. Anyway, we live in a toilet world. There are no friends at dusk.